Barker is a man who can spring a few surprises. He was going well at Cadwell in very, very similar conditions. Number four, Ian McConaughey on the Aprilia, the only European machine on the front row from Chesterfield in Derbyshire. McConaughey has had some very good results, a blistering result last week in Wales, three wins to his credit. The Honda man, 26 years of age today, Alan Carter riding number 12. Today's his birthday. Is he going to have the birthday win he needs so desperately to close the gap between himself and Steve Hislop, who will be riding number eight in this race. Alan Carter from Halifax, number 12. Then we have number 10, Martin Jupp, on the TZ250A Yamaha from Canuck, sixth in the 1989 250cc Super Cup. Martin Jupp, very calm, collected, and a beautifully prepared machine. And pole position, number 72, John Ganey from Langley Mill in Knotts showed us at Cadwell that he could ride well in the wet. Can he repeat the performance here at Thruxton on what is a very, very tricky surface indeed? Water still lying in certain parts of the track as they push off for the warm-up lap. Alongside me is Steve Parrish. Steve, the conditions this morning, as I said, almost brought the meeting into a cancellation situation. Very, very tricky when it's like this. Yes, in actual fact, it's drying out a lot now on the circuit, but uh, this morning there was water laying on the circuit. The machine's doing speeds of up to 150, 160 miles an hour. And they were aquaplaning on the faster parts of the course. Also, this surface here at Thruxton, three years ago it went under a transformation where they changed the surface to a very, very fine, smooth surface from, as opposed from a very gritty surface. And so it does hold the water a great deal. Well, Mark Barker from Gainsborough leading the warm-up here. We've seen him go well. In fact, he surprised us. He caught us a little bit on the hop at Cadwell in very similar conditions. Yeah, he tends to like these wet conditions. And it is a great leveller for machines, really, because if your machine isn't quite as fast down the straightaways, it's often the case you can make up time under the braking in, the wet, in these wet conditions. But I don't think any of the riders, looking at them sat on the grid, they all have full wet tyres on them, very heavily cut tyres. And... Uh, you can see now, looking at the shot, that it's drying in many places, and these wet tyres don't work so good in the dry. Let's talk just briefly, Steve, about Kevin Mitchell, of course, was on the second row, Grand Prix campaigner, 14th place and two points last week in Sweden. Second row, what would you have expected a bit more from him? I think I would have expected more, but it's not such a problem being in the second row on a motorcycle. Uh, you can pass very easily on this wide open circuit here at Thruxton, and with his experience, he should uh, benefit from maybe these mixed conditions. Almost having completed the warm-up lap now, coming up, number eight, Steve Hislop on the hot list. Steve, having had a good result in the Ulster Grand Prix last week, there were all sorts of meetings going on over last weekend. Riders were spread right across the countryside, and one or two riding in the Swedish Grand Prix. The aforementioned Kevin Mitchell, of course, one of those having earned some points in Sweden, so looking to now get some exposure for himself and his sponsors, of course, in the Super Cup Series. The championship standings, Hislop leads on 35, then it's Coulter Carter joint on 24, Jupp, Sawford and Johnson. Reminder across the front row. Mark Barker, Ian McConaughey, Alan Carter in the middle, Martin Jupp, and John Ganey riding number 72, pole position on the Yamaha. Full race distance will be 12 laps, 28.2 miles of this treacherous circuit, and I have to say that because there is still water, although no rain is falling at the moment. The red light goes to green, the 250s looking out of our commentary way all the way safely, heading down towards the first right-hander, Allard. Now, this first lap will take them a little while to sort themselves out. They're feeling their way. 71 didn't get away there. That's Royston Keane from Marlborough in Wiltshire. But John Ganey leads, number 72. Alan Carter right with him, tucking on the inside. Wolsey Coulter, number 18. So, Coulter on the Aprilia. 
Coulter again, Steve, has shown us that he can go well in adverse conditions as Gainey twitched there and almost lost it, left it wide open, so a bit of enthusiasm too early in the race from John Gainey. Yeah, it's always a problem leading on this first lap because you've got to really decide what the conditions are like, so you're the rabbit that everyone else is chaining, and yes, John Gainey just opened the throttle a little bit too much, the rear end slid out and it put him right off line, he's lost two or three places now. Riders still sorting themselves out. Number 18, the race leader, Woolsey Coulter. Coulter sitting in second place, I remind you, in the championship. He's on 24 points, so knows full well what he has to do. This is round five of seven. The rounds remaining are Mallory Park and Donington. The round prior to this one was Knock Hill in Scotland, which was not televised, so a lot went on up there which we didn't get to see. But John Gainey, number 72, still in fourth place, still twitching and weaving his way round as they go into the club chicane at the end of lap one. The conditions on a knife edge as they go through. Coulter leads, then it's Carter. Number 30, Graham Mitchell, then it's John Gainey. So, this is the man in fourth place. And again, number 30, Graham Mitchell, he's a man that we've not seen too much of, but another one good in the wet. Yeah, very much so, but as I said earlier, mixed conditions can change. Uh, a rider that would normally go very well in the dry might not go so well in the wet. But even these wet, heavily cut tyres take a lap or so to get up to working temperature. They need to have some heat in them before they start gripping, but this man, number 18, Halsey Porter, doesn't seem to be waiting for that temperature to come up. He's gone. Mark Parker, number 17. The man in fifth fastest in practice was on the front row but was unable to take the very best advantage of that front row position as 26 years of age, Woolsey Coulter, number 18. Coulter from Northern Ireland, seventh in the 1989 Super Cup. Based in Portadown, leads the race here at Truxton. Alan Carter still desperate to do something about 10 points on his 26th birthday. Then it's Graham Mitchell, number 30. John Gainey still there. Greg Ramsey, number 31. And the sixth place man, number three, Kevin Mitchell from Burton on Trent in sixth place. Now, Steve, Kevin Mitchell there in sixth. That's a good place to be, I would suspect, this stage in the race with the conditions the way they are. Yeah, there's no point in pushing it too hard early on, but what will happen, and we'll see it happen, warm tyres going over these wet conditions it's best to dry that line out and the biggest problem for that uh, from that point is it's very difficult to overtake because you have to go on the wet to pass and so if you've got a lead at this stage then you can usually defend it quite easily by using up all the dry roads on lap three Woolsey Coulter still under pressure from the Honda number 12 of Alan Carter from Halifax Carter in a good second but we've seen Carter throw caution to the wind on occasions, but he's riding this one nicely, looking at the dry line, which Steve Parrish pointed out, and it's there for you to see as well, very quickly drying out now the circuit. And as the conditions do improve, so Coulter will gradually wind on the coals just a little bit more on the Aprilia. still well away. The championship leader, Steve Hisloff, is down in 11th spot, so he's got a lot of work to do. He's, uh, he's struggling and he's not anywhere near the leading pack, so he's a long way to come through. Coulter, head down, tucked in. Alan Carter there coming under pressure now from Graham Mitchell through on the inside. Graham Mitchell alongside Wolsey Coulter. On the Queen's University Belfast machine, Graham Mitchell number 30. Then it's Alan Carter. So these three, nothing between them as they streak over the line through on the inside. At Allard goes Graham Mitchell. So Mitchell from Preston, a truck driver, storming on now at the head of the pack. 26 years of age, Graham Mitchell, riding number 30. Behind him, number 18, second place, Wolsey Coulter. But Coulter hasn't given up, he's fighting back, and down goes Mitchell. A little bit too much, down he goes. Machine and rider, well, he's desperately trying to get it fired up again to stay in contention, and he's away. 
as the marshals and the St. John's run towards him, but there's damage to the machine. Well, Steve, a problem because he was very keen to get going, but it does seem that the bike wouldn't allow him to continue. Yeah, case of over-enthusiasm. He went into the corner a little bit hot, lost the front end. Here we see it in slow motion. He's gone and he's tipped it over to the left, and you see the front end just tuck under. There it goes, and down he goes. It's a real problem to save a front end slide on these machines, but I think what happened, he picked the bike up, and unfortunately, I would assume that either the clutch lever or the brake lever or the footrest or something was missing. <laughs> Away they go, back in front now, Alan Carter, number 12, still right with him, number 72, John Ganey. So Alan Carter celebrating his birthday in fine style here at Truxton. Wolsey Coulter, number 18, still in third. Well, I've got to correct myself, I've been telling you that Coulter's on an Aprilia, of course he's on the Queen's University, Belfast, Yamaha, my apologies. It's McConaughey who has entered on the Aprilia. Coulter is on the Yamaha, the one with those very special bits in, and we've seen it perform so well. So, down into third, John Ganey, 72, sneaks past. Now it's McConaughey on the Aprilia. AM1 Aprilia, McConaughey is in fourth place. Wolsey Coulter on the Yamaha ahead of him. Race leader number 12, Alan Carter. In second place, John Ganey. Well, John Ganey, Steve, is a little bit reckless at times, but he's certainly settled down, and it looks as though he's got the pace to hold the others at bay in second. Yeah, to watch John, he's like a Ron Haslam clone. He's uh, He's been trained and brought up uh, through his racing career and helped a great deal by Ron Haslam, and his style is so very similar. Uh, oh, and just as I said it again, he lost the front end. He hit the wet patch, as we saw, and lost the front end, but luckily, Ryder... Uh, He's OK and the machine isn't, so uh, I think he'll be OK, but he's going to get away from the track. Well, I think that's another case of the TV commentator giving the kiss of death on it there. We were just commenting on how, how well Ganey was riding and how smoothly, and at that very moment, he just dumped it in the track at Thrux, and you can see the front end going. He's down on the knee. A simple case of sliding to earth onto the grass, but sadly... On the fourth lap, it wasn't to be for John Ganey. He just escaped the back end of the bike, giving him a flip. Sits up in disgust, and that's thrown it wide open as number four, Ian McConaughey, now goes through on the inside of Wolsey Coulter to assume second place in the race. Meanwhile, at the front, Alan Carter on his way to 10 points, which he so dearly needs. Let me give you some sort of mathematical sort out as to what this will mean. If Carter picks up 10 points, he will go on to 34. Steve Hislop, the championship leader, is certainly not in the top three. We need to identify where Hislop is in order to give you some indication of what that will mean to him. And he's not in the top six, Steve Hislop. In fact, he's in ninth. So Hislop is on target for two points at the moment. So Alan Carter doing everything he needs to do to assume his rightful role at the top of the table. Right with him, Ian McConaughey from Chesterfield, and right in there as well in third, Wolsey Coulter from Portadown. Honda leads Aprilia, leads Yamaha, and round the outside goes Ian McConaughey. Back onto the dry line, chops across the front of Alan Carter. So a brilliant overtaking move. Steve, the Aprilia seems to have the speed there over the RS Honda. It certainly seemed to, but it makes a lot of difference on how you come out of the corner, but there's very little in, in straight line speed. You can just, just see them buying for that front position. It's who can lead the braking to the last moment. And here we've got a situation. Oh, and that was under it. He locked the rear end up, and he's going off the track. He just managed to bring it back on. But Alan Carter, we saw Alan Carter lead the British Grand Prix a few years back, and unfortunately he fell off with just two laps to go, and he nearly did the same again here today. Let me just compose myself. That was an incredible situation by Alan Carter, who found himself on the outside of the right-hander, going the long way round Ian McConaughey. The back end let go. The foot went down. We'll see it again as it happened. He's on the outside line, and he's forced just a little bit wide. An amazing stuff. Speedway slide the wrong way round, but Carter gets away with it. Steve, no idea quite how he got away with it, but he certainly did. He did real good to get away with that, but just as we were saying, he was off the dry line. The inside line was dry. Alan got off on the wet stuff, and the rear end started to come around, but he did extremely well to hang on to it and even to hold that position. He's now back in third spot, but he'll be charging still. His lock now up in the seventh position, so he is on the move. 
Number eight, Steve Hislop, the championship leader, fighting his way up now. So Hislop up to seventh. McConaughey storming round on the Aprilia, 91.19 miles an hour. That is just 10 miles an hour inside, or rather outside, the fastest lap as it stands with a full dry circuit. So they were circulating at a clear 10 miles an hour slower than that in full practice. The circuit obviously drying and the riders beginning to feel the benefit of it. That little slip by Alan Carter detunes him to the extent that he's dropped into third place behind this man, number 18, Wolsey Coulter. So the man from Portadown has got the Yamaha ahead of the Honda UK rider, Alan Carter. He's now in third. Now third place, not good enough. Hislop is closing. Carter needs to get up front and he needs to get 10 points. Where he is at the moment, he will pick up eight. That won't quite be good enough because Steve Hislop is closing. Interestingly, uh, Kevin Mitchell has pulled in because he didn't like the track conditions and his poor brother, who uh, actually fell off Graham Mitchell while leading the race, obviously didn't have the sense to do so because he went and tipped off. But uh, Kevin has pulled in and I see Martin Jupp has come in. I don't know what his problem is, but he's retired also. So quite a race of attrition here today. It's who can stay upright. Well, Martin Jupp, Steve, if what you say is true, and I can see that he has retired, he was sitting in fourth place in the championship. So it must have been a fairly severe decision for him. There you have the top six. Paul Buhler is there in six. Jim Hodgson, Johnson Allen Carter, Woolsey Coulter, Ian McConaughey, the race leader. We are two-thirds into the race distance. The circuit drying out here at Thruxton. Round five of the Shell Super Cup 250. And it's all systems go for the top three. Alan Carter now has regained some of that composure in third place. He's riding number 12. He's the second rider in your picture now. And he needs to get past number 18, Woolsey Quarter, who is equally keen to improve on his championship position. Interestingly enough, just then in the last shot, we saw Alan Carter staying on the wet part of the circuit. Well, that's to keep his tyres cool, because on the dry part, these heavily cut rear and front rain tyres get very, very hot, and they start to destroy themselves. So if in a straight line you can get on the wet parts of the circuits, it brings the temperature down and also makes the tyre work a lot better. Well cranked over, number four, Ian McConaughey. Another fall of it. So Woolsey Coulter gone, so the QUB Yamaha rider down. Woolsey Coulter thrown it wide open. Now his slot, let's take a look again, Steve. Well, here we go in slow motion. He's tipped it into the left, into the section here. And at this point, the front end just tucks under. And what the problem here is, is the rain tyres on the dry part of the circuit. That was on a dry part of the circuit. And as I said earlier, the tyres overheat and the, the big blocks of deeply cut rubber tend to melt and get very, very gooey. And it folded under on him and down he went. But no harm, I would think, to either the rider or machine at this point. McConaughey, number four, leads. Number 12 in second place, Alan Carter. These two now stretching away, quite a big gap for third place. The other's not in the hunt, but the all-important position, Steve Hislop riding number eight, gradually creeping up the table, and by the elimination of Woolsey Coulter, Steve Hislop is now in sixth. So Hislop in sixth place, he's on the leaderboard and closing, but obviously too distant now to do anything about the lead. Number 39 in your picture, Steve Johnson, fourth place man on the Yamaha. So, Steve Johnson, we haven't seen him up in the front half a dozen of the 250 Super Cup races before. Obviously, shining in these conditions, but quite a gap, nearly 17 seconds between the third and fourth place men. Very difficult now for McConaughey to keep the pace up. As I said, the, the rain tyres won't be working in the dry bits, and when they get so hot, they don't even work in the wet part. So it's really going to be a case of keeping that machine upright and uh, holding his distance here now between uh, him and Alan Carter. I can just imagine how excited Alan Carter is getting now that he senses this could be a win. He's really fighting on the coals. He's behind Ian McConaughey. His track record so far was a win at Snetterton, a win at Pembrey in Wales, and of course, he fell at Cadwell 
in practice and knew nothing about the accident at all, took no further part in the proceedings, and he's up there in front, he's gone through into the lead. So Alan Carter, definitely the quickest man round here at the moment, on the dry line now, has gone past Ian McConaughey and is in front. His timing, Steve, appears to be impeccable. Let's just hope he can stay on it. Well, he seemed to pass Ian there with such ease that I wonder whether Ian McConaughey thought, off you go, son, you lead the race, because you see at this point, Ian's looked behind, and I think he's decided, well, I'll let Alan take the front, row, front line here because of these conditions. It's much easier to follow a rider and maybe make that last-minute dash on the last lap, but we're going to have to wait and see. With two laps to go, Alan Carter leading. RS250 Honda leads the Aprilia of Ian McConaughey, number four. But McConaughey still hasn't given up. He's round the outside of Alan Carter, fighting back. The battle now just about these two. But further on down the placings, Steve Hislop is storming on. So Hislop, the series leader, really going well as through. Again on the inside goes McConaughey. So McConaughey hasn't given up, Steve. He's fighting back. And the race now really alight between these two. McConaughey, the back end on the Aprilia, stepping out there on the outside of the RS Honda of Alan Carters. So swapping and chopping inside and out. There's nearly a dry line all the way around, Steve. But just look at them go, the Aprilia on the wet. Alan Carter tucked down, sweeping around the outside again. It just seems that there are places where the Honda has the edge over the Aprilia and at other places, and again on the brakes, coming through again. Well, this is great stuff. Oh, this is uh, McConnick. He's on the outside, he's on the wet bit, just as Alan Carter was earlier. Arrows decided that I'm taking the inside line. Puts the power, and the rear end starts to slide, but uh, he's on the right line, and they're starting the last lap now. So Alan Carter just needs to keep that machine upright. His lop is up into fifth position, so the race is really hopping up. Into Allard, sweeping round the left-hander towards the right-hander of Campbell. We're approaching Campbell with race leader number 12, Alan Carter. Right in his wheel tracks, number four, Ian McConaughey, who is really on form, having had three wins last week at Pembrey. He won the 125, he won the 400 race as well. So McConaughey bang on form at the moment and is right there with Alan Carter. And does the Aprilia have anything left? Because it does appear that is where it's very, very quick round that long sweeping right-hander of Goodwood Village and Church. They're into that now, piling it round, but it doubles up. It's a tricky turn for them, but the circuit is dry as round the outside comes McConaughey. Alan Carter holding the tight line, keeping the Aprilia at bay. McConaughey there. Still having a look on the inside, but no, Carter's not going to let him through. They're sweeping out and up now towards Woodham Hill. Through Brooklyn's the left-hander, up the climb towards the club chicane. It's going to be about a sprint to the chicane as McConaughey grabs the front and he's on the right line. He's on the inside line. Can he hold it? He's still on the dry. Carter is now three lengths behind through the club chicane. The win is going to go to Ian McConaughey, number four. He piles on the throttle of the Aprilia, heads for the line, McConaughey gets it. Carter in second. Steve, what can I say? A brilliant race. Yeah, Ian McConaughey just did it perfectly. He waited till that last chicane, and then there's no, no time for Alan to pass him back, but it was a perfect race. He waited there, and up he went on the inside. Great racing by those two. So Japanese technology versus the Rotex engine Aprilia. An equally good battle going on. Number 61 ahead. So number 61 there. That's Jim Hodson. So Jim Hodson is grabbing third place. Hodson comes home in third. In fourth place, it's number 39, Steve Johnson from Whitley Bay in the northeast. But the first and second, delighted. Ian McConaughey, number four, got it. Alan Carter, number 12, was second. Great win in very difficult conditions there at Thruxton. Ian McConaughey winning the fifth round of the 250 championship. Carter second, Hodson third. And Steve Hislop, the championship leader, managed fifth place. So all that means that Hislop's championship lead is cut by only a point, eight points uh, over Alan Carter, and there are two rounds remaining.